Okay, before we get started on today's project, I have a little story to tell. I'm all dressed, I did my makeup, I'm ready to start working on today's video, and I go downstairs to let the dog in from her morning play, and the side gate was left open, and the dog was gone. So, I'm starting about 30 minutes late because I went on a nice long walk, unexpected, um, looking for my dog, whistling with a piece of bacon in my hand. I still smell like bacon, but she came right away. She knew her name. She can smell bacon miles away, I think, because she came a running. She was in the neighbor's yard hanging out with them. <laughs> She, at least she's sweet and friendly. Um, very hard to get her to come home. She suddenly becomes lame and exhausted on the way back. She's fine. If we kept walking, she could have walked forever as long as she knows she's not coming home. So anyway, here's a picture of Peaches, our adventure dog, who likes to go visit the neighbors. And so we have to be careful about the gates. So I'm a little warm from my morning walk, but I'm ready to sew now. The dog is downstairs taking a nice nap with her tummy full of bacon, the naughty little thing. Today's video is Vogue 8888. We have done a slip from this before. I did the beautiful um, gray satin slip. I'll put a little picture up here in, in the iCard if you want to make that one. And today we're going to do the other version. It is View D. Now I'm going to do it a little differently. Today we're going to make a spooky little witchy slip or slip dress depends on how you want to wear it. Let me show you the fabrics. I've got for the underneath this beautiful lavender satin, which you won't really see because over it in the bust line, I'm going to be putting this really fun flocked spider web. So it looks like that. Isn't that cute? Instead of a lace, I'm going to use this. This came from Etsy. I'll put the information down below if you would like some fun spiderweb fabric. This is gonna show up again, I bought quite a bit. I'm only doing a little bit in the bust for this project, but I'm doing something else next week with it too. A couple little spoopy little projects this year. And for the bottom half, I found this flocked. Look at this, it's little cats and moons. So this will be the skirt of the project. So you could wear this as a little slip dress. It's fully lined if you want to, or you can make it as a little slip or nightgown. That's today's project. So let's get cutting. All right, this is bias cut. So layout's gonna be a little different. I'll show you that in a minute. This is the back pattern piece. I tried everything on my dress form and it fits great, except for the very back across the hip. And I laid it out just to see where it was gonna go. Now there's bias, so it would kind of stretch, but what happens when, that, when you do that is it'll actually tip up the hem in the back. So instead of all of that happening, I'd rather it just fit properly. So I've added to the center back. Now you can see the center back was never straight. It was always curvy. It always had shape. And I've added to that the gray lines on the bias. So I'm not too worried about how it's affecting this. So it's fine up here um, in the middle of the back. Here's my center back. Here's my waistline. And I've added a tiny bit to the waist. And then I've added more to the hip. And just to keep it nice looking, I've added a little more. It slowly goes out towards the hemline, but not a ton. I really needed it like right in here, so you can see how much I've added. It is about an inch and a quarter per piece. So that gives me two and a half inches extra right across the rear end. So now I'm going to lay out the satin first, cut everything in the bias of the satin, and then I'll do um, in my contrast pieces. When doing grain line on bias, you can see how this is laid out. I've got the the fabric open because I only need one front and I'm actually going to leave it open and flip my pattern pieces which I'll show you in a minute. But this is how you find the grain line. I've lined up my edge of my fabric with my bolt, my cutting table just to keep it nice and straight and I've laid my pattern piece down. I'm measuring from the grain line across. It's 17 inches and then you come down to the other end and do the same thing and I've got a little pin in here to hinge it. This is how you do all grain line, um, whether it's bias or not. And now when I check it, see it's not quite 17 inches, so I'm gonna move this over to the 17. And then I will swing the pattern in on this side. And because it's hinged, it doesn't change. And now I'm gonna measure again till I get it perfectly at 17, and then I'm ready to pin it down. So you can see I overswung it. All right. We're on target. Now I'm ready to pin this piece down and I'll do that for all of these. 
when cutting the back, you're going to cut one face side up and then you'll flip it over and cut one face side down so you get a right and a left. Um, you could fold it if you wanna cut for the other pieces. This one is cut, nope, it isn't, it's even two of those. So um, you choose how you're going to do that, uh, if you wanna fold it or not. I probably won't, I'll probably just flip and cut, we'll see. I'm gonna get these big pieces cut out first. Okay, here's my first part of my layout. I'm gonna get the entire front out, one of the backs, one of the straps, and the binding. I've looked up how the binding is done. I haven't decided if I'm actually gonna even do it the way they're doing it. I may change it, but I may not. I'm cutting it out. I'll make that decision when I get um, ready to sew it. I'm gonna cut these, pull the fabric down, cut another back, cut another strap, and cut out all of the bust, bust parts so that I can then cut out my cute fashion fabric. I actually was able to get a few more pattern pieces in. Um, I'm so parsimonious with my fabric, but I like to have leftovers. I like to have more to do things with. I always end up using my scraps. So you can see how much I have left. And that's just for one more back and a few little tiny bust line pieces, an extra strap. last pieces of the satin I'm cutting out. I actually, I had one of these cut out and I had enough in the scrap hanging off to get the other side. So I've got both of those out. Got to get the other side of the little yoke, my other strap. I have one of these this way and then I'll flip it over and cut the other one. And here's my other back. Here are the pieces I'm cutting out of the spider web. I have both my bust line pieces, the yoke, the straps, and then I think I might want to do the binding. I don't think I'm gonna want just a little piece of lavender isolated out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a binding out of this too, um, just to keep everything matching and looking nice. I've made some executive decisions. If you notice, I have laid my center um, front panel piece, my front panel piece for the skirt is not on the bias and it's on the fold. Because this is a netting, it has a nice crosswise stretch, so the bias is not as essential um, for this. I also didn't like how all of the cats were sideways. I want my cats um, to be upright. They actually are either up or down, but if I cut it on the bias, they 100% would all be sideways. Didn't love it. Um, so I've decided to cut it um, with the straight of grain because I have some stretch in my netting, and I also want the outer layer this upper layer to be fuller than the lower layer. So I have, it's matched at the top. I'll do a top down for you so you can see. So up here at the top, it meets perfectly. And then I have swung it out. So here's my center front. You can see how far at the hem it is. So it gives it a fuller hem. And that's gonna add six inches, a little over six inches. I swung it three inches and that's doubled. So that'll give me six extra inches at the hem, just a little bit extra. I'm gonna refold it and then do the same thing with the back. The back is not on the fold, but I can cut two at the same time, and I will do the same thing. I'm gonna swing out the sides to get the back more fullness because they will be treated as independent until they're sewn together at the top so that I can have um, a little bit fuller outer skirt. I just think it's gonna be prettier. We are now ready to sew, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the directions. The very first thing they have you do is take what you're using as your lining, and they here's the pattern piece right here, and they have you take that lining piece, and they're saying fold under a quarter of an inch and press it down, because they're assuming the piece you're laying over it is lace with a scalloped edge trim that you want to show. Now, I'm not doing that, obviously, so I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna do step one. I'm actually going to come back and add a lace trim to the entire little bust line area after I get the cups sewn. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch, skip down to number two and I'm sewing my um, two pieces together to make the cup with the netting over it with the spider web over the top. So I'm gonna make my cups completely and then I'm gonna come back and add lace along the edge Right here, I'm gonna add eight lace here and add lace here and then sew them together. So that's how I'm going to do it. The same thing with the yoke. They assume on the yoke, you're going to have a lace scalloped edge. That's this right here. That's going to show. And that's why they actually have the binding, all of that stuff, which we are not doing. So um, I'm going to be treating mine a little differently because I'm not going to have this little scalloped edge of lace on my piece. 
Here are my pieces ready to be sewn together. So you can see I have a right and a left cup. And here is the little yoke with all of the pieces together. I'm just sewing it at the center front so that I'm getting these things accomplished. Now when I get to um, down to this point, that's when I'm going to add lace. Okay, here are my two cups and my front yoke. I'm now going to take these cups, and you can see I surged the edge. I'm gonna fold that back and press it, and then I'm going to apply this lace to that folded back edge. So where it would have had the scallop, it's now going to have this applied lace to it. I think it looks kind of gothic and fun. So I've pinned on the lace, and I'm just going to now stitch it on. It's gonna be about a little less than a quarter of an inch right in that area. I'm just gonna to top stitch that all the way around. I've got my black thread on there, and I think that's gonna look so cute. I'm really pleased with how cute that lace looks. I've got a lot of it, so I plan on using quite a bit. So here's how it looks at the machine. You can see the edge of the fabric's lined up with the inside of my quarter inch foot with the inside of the toe. And this is how it looks on the top. That's how it looks on the inside. Okay, I have my two cups together. I have my yoke. And we're now to where we're going to add the cups to the yoke. And the way they do it is they actually sew it together so that you have the seam showing on the right side. And then they bind the seam with this little piece of satin, or I did cut out um, the web so I could have it matching exactly, but there's not really a reason to do it this way. Like, um, you, it's cute, and if I did not have the little bit lighter, the, the purple on the bottom's a little different, I don't like this lavender color next to my cat fabric. I just don't think it looks nice. So I, th I think I'm not gonna do the binding, but if you wanna do the binding, I'll just tell you how. You're gonna sew these together with the right side out, and then the binding is going to go over that seam. Here we are. You fold it in half, and then you flip it over, you trim away the excess of your seam allowance, flip over the binding piece, and then, that, and then top stitch it down, and it covers that seam. So you have a self-enclosed, it's not self-enclosed, but you have an enclosed seam enclosed inside the binding, and then it's ready to attach it to the skirt. Or, and one of the reasons I think they do that is just this point right here. So I've pinned it together how it's going to be. Instead of pinning it so that we have the raw edge out and we have to bind it, I'm just sewing it together, right sides together like this, and then the seam will be on the inside, can't be seen. I've done my little lace here, which even helps hide it more, so that's how I'm gonna do it. Okay, so I am sewn up to here. Ta-da. I want to have my slip free. I don't want my two pieces in the skirt attached at the side seam so that they flow free, but they are sewn together right in this area. All the layers are. So I'm going to go ahead from this point, I'm stopping before I attach this to the skirt, and I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna sew the backs of the satin and of the kitty cat fabric. I'm gonna sew both backs together. And then I am going to um, look at how I want to do my side seams. So I'll probably do the, these two backs. And then I've got right here, I've just pinned the two together for the front along where the yoke is going to sew. I'm not sewing anything together yet. So I'm gonna, the back stacked, the front stacked, I'm gonna kind of start pinning things together to figure out how I'm going to do this little side seam thing so that part of it's sewn together and part of it isn't. I'll get back to you on that in a few minutes. Okay, I've been doing some thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this seam together. I might sandwich a little piece of a lace in there. I think that would look really pretty. But before I get to that, I'm gonna to go to the back. The back says, so we've sewn both of our seams. So I have two layers here. Here they are, you can see the little surged edge on my, my shear layer. And this is the waist, or not the waist, but the upper back, the top of the back. And what they're having us do is they're having us take our elastic. You, there's a pattern piece that shows you what length to cut it. 
And um, you don't have to cut out that pattern piece. You just need to measure it. You can leave it where it is without cutting it out. What they want us to do is lay this on the wrong side. So on the wrong side, we're gonna lay our elastic down and stitch and stretch. So you're gonna stitch it to this edge, stitch and stretch. Once you've done that, you're going to fold it to the inside so that it's sandwiched inside and stitch it again, which I think is nuts. And I'll tell you why I think it's nuts because the elastic, thin elastic like this, the more times you stretch and stitch it, especially straight stitched, it'll just stay stretched out. You're gonna lose any elasticity in it. So I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead and search this edge. I'm gonna fold down the 5 8 I'm going to top stitch a casing so that I have a, I can fish my elastic through. And then I'm just gonna tack it on each end so that my elastic will still be stretchy. If I do all of the stitching that they recommend, unless I have a super heavyweight elastic, which you don't want in your little nightgown, you don't want a big thick elastic, you want something soft like this. So I'm not gonna do it their way. Their way, um, I'm sure it could work. If you have a really fine charmeuse, I'm working with the true satin, so it's got a little bit more stiffness and a little more weight against this soft lace or a soft elastic. And on top of that, I have a netting layer too. So I've got a couple layers of, of fabric, a couple layers of stitching. The elastic will lose all of its stretchiness, sadness all around. So I'm going to serge this edge and then come back and make a casing. So I'm basting my lace to the top front skirt. Everything else is still loose. I'm still deciding exactly how I'm going to treat that. I've got this lined up so that the edge is at the 5 8 and then the tape part of the lace is right at the needle and I'm stitch basting it down so that I can attach the yoke and bodice top. Here is the casing that I made for the elastic in the back. I did change to a purple thread on top just for this little section because it just blends in a little better. And now I'm ready to just fish through the elastic um, at each end and then I'm just gonna tack it down at both ends to keep it inside. And then I'm gonna decide how to get all of these pieces together and all the seams finished. So here's my back skirt. I have the two layers just attached at the very top. I have figured out how I'm going to, how I'm going to do this. It's gonna involve a little clip but only on the netting side, I believe, should be good. Anyway, here's I, my elastic has been fished through the casing. I've stitched it right here so it can't go anywhere. Here's the other side that I just snapped right out of my fingers. Here's the other side with the, with the safety pin on it. So you can see how it's gathering up, not a ton. If you need more gathers, I often do. I often need a little more in the back because I'm small across the back compared to the front you can make that tighter. You can pull in your elastic. And not every elastic's the same. This elastic, my black elastic, is super soft. Super, super, super soft. So I kind of need it to be smaller to get it to do what I need to do. But whenever you get it to the dimension you need to fit across your back, then you're gonna come back and tack this down. Sew across that elastic, through the casing, way out like at a quarter of an inch, and then we can trim this off. Let me do that real quick. Let me do that, and then I'll show you the next thing. Okay, so there's my back. Here's my front skirt, and I've applied the lace to it. So now I'm going to take my bodice top with the yoke attached, and we're gonna sew this on, and I'm going to sew it at the 5 8 and serge everything off. So we're gonna just sew this all the way across, and then we will have front sewn together. Mm -hmm. Trying to flip it, but it's not doing very good. We'll have the front sewn together, we'll have the back sewn together. Then we will figure out our side seams because it has to be caught from the bodice part down to the beginning of the waist. After that, they can separate. So I think I know how I'm going to do it. Um, we're gonna get this part done and then I'll come back and we'll discuss it. So back in a few. All right, I have pinned together my front and my back at the side seam just as far as the yoke seam. I didn't even catch all of the seam allowance. I'm only going to stitch these together. I'm gonna to sew it first at the sewing machine, my 5 8 and then I'm going to come to the bottom here, right below that seam, and right where the netting is, I'm going to clip in the 5 8 so that I can move it out of the way, and then I will serge the whole thing together. 
all the way down. But when I do that, the netting will not be attached from this seam. So here's the front. You can see here's the bodice or the, the bra cup. Here's the yoke. I'm sewing front to back from this side seam in the bodice just to the yoke, right to that seam only and stopping because that's where I want my skirt to be free from. So I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm doing it at the 5 8 inch, straight stitching it at the sewing machine first so that I can clip that netting away. I'll show you a little close up of that. And then I'm gonna surge down all of the satin together. Then I can come back and treat the netting separately. I can hem them separately and then we'll be ready for our shoulder strap. So get ready for a little close up of the little clippy, sewy mess that we're getting ready to do. It's actually a little trick, and it's a pretty common thing to be done. You couldn't do that with anything, but netting doesn't fray. It is fragile. You don't want it to tear or rip or run, but I, you could clip it right there, and it should be just fine for the thing that we're doing. Here is the seam that I just sewed from the front to the back, just in the bodice area only, so you can see where it ends. It ends right at that seam right where the bodice ends. So here's my little netting areas. So right here, I'm going to clip the netting. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to clip right here, only 5 eighths of an inch in, so I can swing that netting out of the way and treat it separately. So right here, there's gonna just be a little short clip. I'm not doing it on the camera because I wanna make sure I have everything straight. I don't wanna make a mistake. So hold on, I'm gonna clip it real quick and I'll come back. Okay, so this is how it looks. Now, if you don't have an outer skirt like I do, you're just gonna sew up the side seam and be done. But because I chose to have an outer skirt and to have them free flowing and separate from each other, this is my little trick. So see now how I can fold this completely out of the way? I can now pin this down the rest of the way. I'm going to just surge it straight down. I probably will do it right in here. I'll straight stitch a little bit just to make sure that I don't have any hooky doos with this thing. Don't wanna have any hiccups there and then I can just surge down. I'm gonna do that on both side seams. Here we are. So it is sewn together on the satin layer. The side seam is open just from here in the netting layer only. So now I can just flip this around to the netting layer, line up my two side seams independently and sew them down. Now I can serge it, I can roll hem it, I can just do a little tiny straight stitch, which is probably what I'm going to do because it's going to be the least visible on the outside. So I think I'm gonna just straight stitch this down. Now, netting doesn't fray, so I don't have to hem it if I don't want to, but what I am going to do, I think, is put lace on the netting on the hem, and on the satin side, I've already searched the hem, I'm just gonna turn it up and straight stitch it. And I'm gonna go let the dog out and make sure the gate's closed. I'll be back in a minute. So here is the side seam on the netting. Got a little haircuts to do here. You can see this is where I clipped to get them separate. And now I'm doing the hem in the satin. Switched my thread so it matches really well. I've searched that edge. I'm just turning it up and stitching it. Give every, all the satin stuff's gonna get a good press. Then, on this side, see how that sort of disappears. I'm going to um, edge this, I think, in the same black lace that I put everywhere. I kind of like an even longer black lace if I can find it. I don't know, well, I'm gonna do some lace on the bottom of that, and we have to make our shoulder strap. Now, just applying the lace to the netting hem edge to the kitty cats, and I'm just overlapping it and stitching along sort of this um, ribbon edge here, the tightly woven edge. That's it, all the way around the circle. Look at that, oh my goodness, it's giving me bewitched vibes. Okay, so I'm going to now come inside here where these side seams are. I've just pushed everything to the back, tucked in all my threads, and I'm gonna stitch this down by hand just to make it um, nice and smooth and everything stays put. So from the outside, it looks like that, which looks great. Then all that's left is our shoulder strap. And I have decided instead of doing the strap like I was going to, which was the satin and the spider web, I'm going to do the lace. So I'm just gonna cut my lace strap and stitch it down and show you. Let me give everything a good press too. 
What do you think about my Halloween take on a classic Vogue slip? I'm loving it. I think it's super cute. This definitely could be a little cocktail dress, a little slip dress. You could throw a little jacket over it, um, a stole, a lace wrap, and go out for the evening in it. It's very cute, especially if you had a Halloween party to go to. Um, I like all the fabrics. I have not tried washing these. These are a flocked netting and flocked sometimes comes off in the wash. So I personally will be either delicate washing this or hand washing line drying specifically for the flocking so that we don't have any of that come off, especially in the dryer. Heat is usually the thing that's the enemy of a flocked fabric. So we're going to keep heat away from it, though I did do a little bit of pressing and it did fine with the little bit of pressing that I did. I'm very glad that I kept these two layers independent. I think it's much cuter if you were going to walk or dance or something in this. It'd be very swishy and cute. So it's, it's really an easy pattern to put together. If you're looking for a nice classic slip, this is a great pattern to uh, sew for that. This one goes up to, I believe, a size 20 if you're um, plus size. I'd love to know if you sew this. I'd also like to know, are you making any fun Halloween things this year? Anything that's a little bit spooky or um, th on theme for the season? I'll give you a little rotate so you can see. Here's the back. Just so you can see how it falls and lays. Let me do a few close-ups for you. See you next week for another fun video, another spooky.